You all know that moment when you click that button, send that data over to your Google Analytics phone, then it doesn't show up in your tool. Well, there might be many reasons why the data doesn't show up. The fact is that these tools are very complicated tools and the data that is incoming is actually going through many processing steps before it is displayed to the user. So sometimes you just want to have a raw view of the data that you send in and see if everything is formatted correctly, if it left your GTM correctly and don't want to bother with all the processing stuff that is going on in the background. So how can you see your raw data output? Well, I would say just build your own tracking tool and we'll do this today with the help of Google Sheets. This can be super helpful if you want to have a secondary tracking tool that actually gathers your data apart from these big tools like GA4 or something else out there and just want to see the raw data output. So all we need for that is actually a little database, which in our case can be Google Sheets and it's pretty easy to set up. Let's go over to a new Google Sheet here, put in sheets.new and that will open up Google Sheets. And if you're logged in with your Google account, you will see this familiar interface and we'll call this our tracking tool. Give this a name and now you need to go over to extensions up here and go to app script. This will open up our app script editor and here we'll need to fill in some JavaScript that does the operations that we wanted to do. Now, either you know what you're doing with JavaScript or you can go over to the LMM of your choice. I use Claude here and can put in a little prompt to write the JavaScript for you. I have a little prompt already written here, which is write a Google app script that accepts incoming get requests and writes the query string parameters into a Google sheet. The Google sheet should have the timestamp in the first column and then the rest of the columns would be filled with the query string parameter keys. The values would be filled with the respective cells, obviously. If there is a new parameter in the URL, add it to the column to the sheet and we'll press enter and let's see the output here. What I really like about Claude is this new artifacts feature that will write the code here on the right side. And once it's done, it's actually pretty short. We can copy the contents, go over to our app script editor and just replace here these functions. Now, if you want to know more about this, you can actually read through the whole description from Claude as well. And with that, we need to go through some other steps here. First of all, let's give our project a name. Let's save this. And then let's run this for fun. Now we will get a request for some permissions and let's review the permissions. You need to give access from your Google account to receive these get requests. So we'll allow this and we get an error. This is fine. Now, one other thing is that we'll need to deploy this as well as a web app. So we'll go in and click on new deployment here and up here the gear icon and we want to have a new web app. I'm just gonna call this tracking tool and we want to access this to anyone on the internet because then we can send it from any kind of website to our tracking tool. This is what we want. The scopes are very limited. Only tracking data can basically be sent in. Well, we first need to also authorize this one. So let's go ahead and allow this. We'll get here a web app URL. This is actually our tracking URL that we can use. So we can copy that and put it into our browser here. Let's see what it does. We get actually an error. Let's take that error and put it back into Claude. I get this error. It apologized and writes us a new app script. That is fine. So let's copy that, put that back into the tool. Unfortunately, if you change anything, you need to deploy again. So we'll copy this, deploy a new project. Let's call this version two, anyone and deploy. So here's our new URL, press enter. Let's see what it does. Data locked successfully. What data can we see in our tracking tool right now? We just have timestamps, which is fine because we didn't put anything in the actual query string just yet. So let's try out the query string. We have our URL again, and I'm gonna do a question mark and then we would have some data and then a value for that data. So I'm just gonna do this as dummy data. Let's press enter. And we should see here, we have a new data and new value in here. So this is the column data, and this would be the value that I would put in. So if you would, for example, like to track data, just like in Google Analytics, you would have maybe something like an event equals click, and then you can chain data together. So we'll do an and sign and put in, for example, text of the button was add to cart. Just be aware that this is still a URL, so it needs to be URL encoded. If you wanna have any spaces in there, then you would need to use a URL encoder of your choice. You could also use the LMM of your choice to format that correctly. So I press enter and here we go. We have a new column called text and event here is in this case, click. Now, how can you use this with your Google Tag Manager together? So let's go with a really easy example. We'll go into Google Tag Manager here. And we have our demo shop where Google Tag Manager is installed already. We'll go with tag 
and let's go with new tag and here we would need to choose a tracking tool obviously we don't have one but we can choose the custom image pixel which we can put in our url from before and we can add our query string however we wanted to so for example we could put an event equals and then you can utilize the built-in variables from google tag manager so i'm gonna go with two open brackets and let's just choose event here and then let's add some other data for example the page path here so it would be a page view tracking in the end. So let's do our new tracking tool and page view tracking. As a trigger, we'll choose our all pages trigger and let's just try this out. We'll click on preview here. And as the site loads, our tracking pixel should fire. So here we have our container loaded with our page view tracking fired. And then in the tracking tool, we see here, there is a new event that gives us the GTMJS, which was the event name. We will have the data and we have a parameter that was added to this. You can actually turn this off, I think, right here as well, if you don't want to have the enabling cache busting as well. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So with that, you are ready to set up more events. If you want to send in test data from your not working events, for example, or your Facebook pixel, just to see how the variables resolve, you can all put that in here in the image pixel. You just need to encode it into the URL correctly. So it will be recognized by our tracking tool and put into that sheet. Now we could even add a metric here. So for example, let's say this is a page view and here in our URL, we would say, and sign and our metric is our page view equals one because every time we fire this there would be one page view that would be sent over so let's save this and preview and voila we have the first one let's just generate some page views here to see if this actually works and now our tracking tool should have that data in here. So we have here our tracking tool. And if you wanted to know how many pages actually happened, you can just mark this and we had in some four right here. So this is really, really useful if you want to just know the raw data output from your tools and can change them together in the query string here. Super easy method. You could obviously make this a little bit more fancy in using a custom HTML tag. You could also not connect this to Google Sheets and run it right into something like BigQuery, although you would need to have a cloud function running in order to import that data. And overall, it's a really easy, small method that you can utilize to test your data. Big caveat here is obviously that this won't scale, so you shouldn't put it onto a website with millions and millions of page views as your Google Sheet will be limited to a few million rows, I think. So this will fill up quite quickly. But I hope this shows you a little bit of a proof of concept, what you can do with Google Sheets, with App Script, with the help of LMMs to create your own tracking deployment and build these little tools that help us out in the measurement world. If you want to hear more of these tips around how you can build these little tools, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. And then I'll decide maybe to do more videos on the little tools that we use internally as well. Now for now, thank you for watching. My name is Julian. Till next time.